And uh, so tonight's message is entitled Church Without Walls. And like Brother Fred said, this, this is one of my passions and also my specialty in that I truly believe uh, that the church of Jesus Christ is the church without walls. And we're going we're gonna to discuss more about that. And what does that really mean? Uh, a, a church without walls. And, um, and so I'm going to start tonight in Hebrews uh, chapter 13, but this is in the Passion uh, Translation. It's uh, Hebrews 13, 13. But I think I'll start just a little bit before that um, in verse uh, 11. Hebrews 13, are we all together? Um, For the high priest carries the blood of animals into the holiest of chambers as a sacrifice for sin, and then burns the bodies of the animals outside the city. And Jesus, our sin sacrifice, also suffered death outside the city walls to make us holy by his own blood. And of course, that's talking about the cross. And then verse 13, now I'm reading out of the Passion Translation. So we must arise and join him outside. Now listen to this part, the religious walls and bear his disgrace. And so when I'm talking about the church without walls, I'm talking about three different things that I want you to remember tonight. Three different things. You might want to write these down and pray over them. Consider those those things and the Lord will reveal more to you. Uh, You know, as we bring forth these messages, we want you to consider them. We want you to uh, look into the scriptures and see what the Holy Spirit is speaking to you. And number one, I want you to remember tonight is that the def- part of the definition of the church without walls is a church without constraints. It is a church without constraints. And that means that we are out of that religious system of rules and regulations and doctrines of men, which make the word of God of none effect. That's what the word says. Number two. I want you to think about the church without walls is where God's love abides. I'm talking about agape love, not the love that we just have in the natural realm. I'm talking about agape love, love without condition. Okay, number three, I want you to remember the church without walls is a church with one purpose, and that is to do the will of the Father. And Jesus was crucified outside the religious walls. He was crucified for all of mankind. And that is where he established the church. Hallelujah. Now think about that. When he died on the cross for all mankind, On that cross, he established the foundation of the church without walls. Now, is there anything wrong in meeting together? Of course not. Is there anything wrong in meeting together for corporate praise or worship or to have a prayer meeting or to uh, to do a Bible study? And the answer is no. There's, there's nothing wrong with that. And people receive strength uh, from being able to meet uh, together as a, as a group I'm talking about. But, but this is much more than just a group meeting. What I'm talking about tonight is a church without walls, without restraints, where God loves abides. And number three, where... There's one purpose, and that is to do the will of the Father. 
Now, how many of you know that the word of God says that uh, it gives a description of you? George, this is who you are. Joy, this is who you are. Jenny, this is who you are. Jen, this is who you are. Mary, this is who you are. Holly, this is who you are. Quinn, this is who, who you are. Hallelujah. You are, and Brother Fred, and Sherry, this is who we are. We are ambassadors for Jesus Christ. We are his hands, his feet, his, his mouth, his eyes, his ears. We are his body. Hallelujah. But do you, if you think about an ambassador, a diplomat from any country, they represent their country and everything is provided for them. Their clothing, their food, their protection, they have security guards, their transportation, their spending money, everything is provided for them. Well, that's what Jesus has done for all of us. But they don't stay in their home. They, exactly. They go out. They go out where they are sent. They are sent ones. And so this church without walls is a church, remember, that has no restraints. It has no, no rules, no regulations that are made by man. It's all by the Holy Spirit. They're sent, like Brother Fred said, they are sent by the Holy Spirit. And number three is what? They have one purpose, and that is to do the will of the Father. You know, I think about Acts chapter two, where the day of Pentecost uh, came, and those 120 people were there in that room for 10 days. And then the Holy Ghost and fire fell. And then they began to speak with new tongues. And then what did they do? They went out. They went out. They did not stay in that room. They did not hoard up what they had. They went out. And they began to preach. And they began to teach. Hallelujah. And there was healing. And so, as we talk about the church, Without walls, I want to turn to um, Matthew nine thirty five, and I'll stay in the in the the passion translation. The volume become very low, Sister Sherry. So now it's okay. It's okay now. It's okay now. Now, now it's okay. Okay, I need to speak up again. Uh, this is yeah. too low. It's getting low. Getting low. We can't hear you. You can't hear us? We, uh, I barely hear you. Okay. Uh, we've got our uh, volume up to 100%. But that can't be their volume coming into us. Um, hmm. okay. And our microphone is on. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, better. Not better. Is that that's better? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm in Matthew chapter nine, verse thirty-five. This is what Jesus did, and the church without walls. This is what we're supposed to be doing. I'm in nine thirty-five. Just let me find my, my scripture here. Jesus went about all the cities and villages. Right. This is, okay. This is not like the King James reads. So I was looking for it. Jesus walked throughout the region. He walked throughout the, the cities and villages with a joyful message of God's kingdom. He taught in their meeting houses. 
and whatever he, wherever he went, he demonstrated God's power with healing every kind of sickness and disease. Now, in the King James Version, it says that he went from village to village, teaching, preaching, and healing every sickness and disease. Can you hear me okay now? Okay. Yeah. So this is what we're supposed to be doing. And this is the job of the church without walls. Is that we are going to go out and do exactly what Jesus did. You know, it says in 1 John that as he is, so are we in this earth. Like I said, we represent him. Every place we go, when we go into the supermarket, when we go into the marketplace, when we go to our jobs, uh, when we're in our family situation, when we're in our church group, we represent Jesus. Hallelujah. The church without walls. Just think about it. Think about it. Because there are people that say, well, you know, I'm going to church today. I'm going to church today. But we are the church. The building is not the church. It's just a structure. It's just a place where people can gather to get out of the rain or to get out of the snow or whatever kind of weather there's, there's out there. It's just a structure made by men's hands. But you see, the church without walls is made with God's hands. Now think about it. You're made in the image of God. You're made to go forth and to teach and preach and bring healing to the people. And so as we consider the church without walls, what are those three things I said to consider and to think about as a definition? Number one, what is number one? Somebody tell me, what is number one on your list? <laughs> what is number one? Somebody tell me. Uh, without a uh, rest, uh, restraint, without a uh, doctrine. Okay, without restraints, no rules, no regulations. It's made by man. Made by man. We're led by the Holy Spirit. So this church is made up of the sons of God. We we are. It's made up. I get excited about this. I get excited because. We have, we started in our home with our family. And then we had others that would come and join us. A uh, Joy and George uh, sat in our living room and, and we had Sunday morning service. But then the Lord sent us out. And that's when we went into different areas. We went into the jails. We went into the prisons. We went into the crack houses. We went into recovery homes. Uh, we went into low income uh, housing areas and taught the children and, and their parents. Hallelujah. And then we raised up the mission downtown Athens. And we had that for eight years where the prostitutes come. You know, I, I looked at one, one service and I was the one ministering. and. I saw on one row, I saw four prostitutes. And on the very row behind them were their pimps. They were all there that came to hear the word of God. And I was excited. I was excited about what God did with those people, the church without walls. Uh, that, that's exactly what it was. And when we went into the jails, when we went into the prisons, you know, there were those that were, that came to the Lord. There were those that were healed. There were those that, 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 you know, murderers uh, that turned their hearts to Jesus. 
And so this is, Jesus went about the cities and the villages, preaching, teaching, and healing. Hallelujah. So, number one, Joy gave a, a, a very good answer there. And that was no restraints, no religious, no religious walls, no rules of man. Okay, number two. What's number two on the list? I got you now. Love. Yes. <laughs> it's uh, it's um, where God's love, love uh, abides. Love. It's the uh, agape uh, love. Oh, thank you, George. Thank you, George. Uh, where God's love abides. And so let's turn uh, to Matthew 25, and I'm going to use the King James this, this time. We're all familiar with this passage here. I'm in uh, Matthew uh, 20 and 25. Now, what is the church without wall supposed to be doing? What is our job? Uh, and where that love abides. Uh, hallelujah. That's number two. And it says, here, Jesus said in verse 35 of Matthew 25, if you're, keep, if you're keeping notes, for I was hungry and you gave me to me, you gave me meat. I was thirsty and you gave me to drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then shall the righteous say to him, Lord, when, when did we see you hungry and thirsty and in, in prison and naked? And, and, and Jesus said to them, and the king shall answer and say, verily I say unto you, inasmuch as you have done it unto the least of these, my brethren, you have done it unto me. So this is what we're supposed to be doing. This is God's love right here. God's love abides in the church without walls. His agape love, hallelujah. We don't, we don't judge people. We don't say, well, you know, you're out here on the street and you're begging on the corner uh, because you've sinned, because you've done evil things. We are not supposed to judge. It says, judge not lest you be judged. And so Jesus said, as, as you do, as you give my love to others, you're doing it unto me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Number three, what was number three? Is to do the, the will of God. Thank you, Mary. To do the will of God of God. The church without walls has one purpose, one purpose, and that is to do the will of the Father. Isn't that what Jesus said, Brother Fred? Yes, that's what his food was, to do the will of the Father. That's what his food was. <clears throat> when his disciples said, you know, you know, don't, do you have food? Do you, uh, are you hungry? And, and Jesus says, I have food that you know not of. That's when he was there in, in Samaria by the well. And he said, my food is to do the will of my father. And so the church without walls, that's their purpose. They have one purpose. They have one goal. Hallelujah. You know, I want to talk about the, just a little bit about the body of Christ. And um, if you'll turn with me to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Um, this is also talking about the gifts of the spirit, you know, to one, he gives this and to another, he gives this over here to another faith. Um, uh, but it's all of the same spirit. Uh, but then in verse 12, it says here, for as the body is one, we are one overcomers. Say it with me. We are one. We are one. We are. Say it. We are, we, are one. Are one. we are one. We are one. That that's exactly right. We are one. 
We are one in the spirit. We are one in the Lord. Isn't that that? Yeah, yeah. We are one in the spirit. We are one in the Lord. You know, in this read on here, it says we are one and you have many members. Look at here. We have eight members right here. We have eight members of the church without walls right here. Hallelujah. Member, many members and all the members of that one body being many are one body. One body. And that body is Jesus Christ. That body. We're all members. It says, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been made to drink of the same spirit. And that's a big S. In my Bible, it's a big S. And when it's a big S, it's the Holy Spirit. <coughs> And it says, for the body is not one member, but many. And the hand cannot say, I'm in 15. <coughs> I have no, I have, I, I, he cannot say to the ear. The hand cannot say to the ear, I don't have any need of you. <coughs> And the eye cannot say to the ear, I, I don't have any need for you. If the, if the whole were just hearing, where would there be any smell? But now had God set the members, every one of them in the body as it pleases him. And if they were all one member, where would, where would the body be? And so I'm talking about in the church without walls to do the will of the Father, we need every person. We need them doing their part, whether it's prayer, whether it's teaching a Bible study, whether it's working with the children, whether it's go, going to the nursing homes and, and visiting with the, <laughs> the elderly. You know. We've done that too. You, you didn't mention that a while ago. We've spent a lot of times in nursing homes. We've taken our children into nursing homes and, and let them uh, uh, sing praises to the Lord. We all sing praises to the Lord. Uh, and there are people uh, in many, many different walks of life that are hurting. Uh, and they're, they feel abandoned. They feel like they've, uh, that they're not uh, functioning where, where they need to be. Uh, functioning and people in nursing homes people mm -hmm. in jails they're just they're lonely uh, and it's easy uh, to contact people and uh, for example we have uh, Cindy uh, that she ta takes bags to the nursing home and even though now mm -hmm. with the pandemic uh, there are places that she can't go in she takes uh, uh, bags to them and to the jail, they're still not letting people go into the jail like we have for years and years. Uh, but she's been writing out Bible studies to give to uh, people in jail. So there are a lot of different ways to reach people on the outside. And, and this is something Sherry and I are going mm -hmm. to start doing. We, we've talked about this recently. Just give you some examples of how you can reach out and touch people. Uh, we have a uh, post office box here in Athens and uh, <laughs> what's funny about that post office box it used to belong to the international pagans <laughs> and, and, and uh, so we get letters all the time to pagans and so these are pagans that are in prisons all over the United States and they send us letters and so Sherry and I have decided we're going to start sending them letters you know there are no coincidences and it's, we own that box now, that post office box used to be owned by international pagans. And so <laughs> evidently they still have some websites out there saying to send your letters uh, to this uh, particular post office box. Well, now we own the post office box. And so 
when we get a, a letter from somebody in prison, we're going to send them back a letter and and uh, bless them about Jesus about, Christ and talk to them about Jesus. Uh, you know, there and the reason I just bring these up, these are just different ways that you can reach out uh, to people. And you might say, well, I, I don't want to get out and I don't want to uh, get dirty. Or, but there are ways that you can uh, help people where they are. There are people that need prayer. Um, <laughs> That's the let, truth. Let, find out what people need. Uh, pray. Uh, you can, for example, on Facebook, there are people constantly asking for prayer. Now, there's so many people out there. I don't uh, pray for every time I see somebody wanting prayer, but there are people that are desperate mm -hmm. and they're all around us and we can't just uh, close our eyes to them and say that mm -hmm. they don't matter. There are people all around us that need help. That's right. uh, we are That's right. constantly bombarded with people asking for prayer and we're we're praying for them Amen. and God's answering those prayers and we're yes, writing keeping hallelujah. a journal of answered prayers uh and 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 remembering what God is doing and so the more times we remember what he does the more times we're grateful for what he does then we're just stewarding uh the the power of God within us and uh, the prayers. And so there are so many different ways that we can reach out. And, and it's not just about being satisfied uh, that I, I've got a nice little house and mm. me and myself and us four and no, no more, but we can reach out and help people who need help. Okay. That's the truth. And that's what this message is all about tonight. Just to bring your awareness uh, to you that the, the church, the living church of Jesus Christ is a church without walls, is a church without restraints, is a church that's filled with God's love. And it's one purpose in everyone who is part of this body, part of this church is the will of the father, to do the will of the father. And so I want to go to Luke chapter 10. Another very familiar passage, and this is in uh, starting in verse 30, and it says, and Jesus answering them, uh, a certain man, he's doing some teaching here. I'm doing some teaching tonight, hallelujah, uh, just to bring to your attention uh, some things that the Lord wants you to think about, and the Lord wants you to be active in his body. And, and so there was a certain man who went down from Jericho to Jerusalem, or from Jerusalem to Jericho, from the church. He was going away from the church. He was straying away. You may have some family members. You may have some friends. You may have a person that you know that is, is going the opposite direction from where they need to be going. And it says he fell among thieves. And that's what will happen. When a person goes off the pathway of righteousness, then the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus comes to bring life and life more abundantly. And that's in John 10, 10. And it says they stripped him. What did they strip him of? They stripped him of his righteousness. And they wounded him. And they departed, leaving him to be half dead. And by chance, there came down a certain priest. Now, here you have the invasion of the, of the church that's made by God, by man's hands. And you've got, you've got a structure in those, uh, that religious structure. And the priest comes by and, and passes on the other side. Uh, they, they're not supposed to touch any dead thing. And then, you know, that's one of their rules. That's one of their regulations. And then the Levite, when he was there at place, came and looked at him and passed by the other side. And that's what religious does. Religion does. Religion is concerned about power. They're concerned about 
how much money they're bringing in, and they're concerned about how many members are in their church. Think about it. They're concerned about power, they're concerned about money, and they're concerned about how many members. And by power, you mean influence. I'm talking about influence. And so this is, a, both of this, the religious system will pass over the people who need help. Why? Because they can't influence them. They can't uh, get any money out of them. And they um, are not, not going to be an eligible member in their congregation. Remember, I've told you this, this uh, story before, but some of you are new and you may not have heard it before. But when we had the mission, there was this young man who had tattoos all over his body. You had piercings all over his body. Uh, he wore a, a leather jacket. And one night he came into the service and, and he sat down and he said, can I talk to you? And I said, sure. And he said, uh, something happened to me Sunday morning. He said, I went down uh, there on the corner uh, to uh, that big church, big white church down there. He said, I just wanted to, I didn't want to cause any problems. I didn't want to do anything evil. He said, I just wanted to sit on the back row and see what they did there. But as soon as he sat down, one of the ushers came and got him by the arm and made him stand up and then took him outside um, the, the front door of the church building and said, you need to go because we don't have your kind. We don't allow your we, kind. We don't allow your kind. In here. In here. Now, they will stand before Jesus for that. They will stand before the Lord Almighty because Jesus said, I was hungry and you fed me. And I was thirsty and you gave me to drink. And I was naked and you clothed me. And so... The church without walls. Can, can you imagine the hmm. church of Jesus not accepting somebody who wanted to be there and to pick them up and to force them out of the building? That's not my Jesus. That's Jesus right. Jesus says, go into the highways and byways and compel them to come in. Amen. Amen. Let, let's finish this story. But there was a certain Samaritan. And on, well, this, is a, uh, this is a type of the church without walls. It's Jesus Christ. It says, as he journeyed, came, and when he found the man, he had compassion on him. And he went to him, and he bound up his wounds, pouring in the oil and the wine, and set him upon his beast and brought him to the inn. Praise the name of Jesus. And he said, I'll, I'll pay for everything. That, that very next verse said, you know, I'll pay, you know, whatever is, is needed, I'll pay for it. And so this is doing the will of the Father. The will of the Father doesn't want any person to be, to perish. Any person in your family, he doesn't want them to perish. Any person that you know in your, in your community, of of your workplace or your uh your your clubs that you might be a member of uh, he doesn't want any of those people to perish and our time to be the church without walls is very short and the enemy knows that and that's why he's coming at some of your family members that's why he's coming at marriages that's why he's coming at finances attacking attacking, attacking attacking those those individuals attacking your finances attacking your bodies right now we know what five or six people yeah. that have come down with covid they're right now dealing with it they're dealing with it right now and so i'm saying to you that we need to be the church 
without walls. That walls are not going to hinder us. We're going to go outside the gate. We're going to go outside uh, to the to the hill of Calvary, where Jesus Christ established the church. Hallelujah. That's good. That's good. Hallelujah. On that cross, he established the cross. He established the church. Right, right. Praise the name of Jesus. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna close for right now, but I just uh, I want you to to think about this. I want to I want you to think about your activities and and is there something that the Lord wants to change? Uh, your maybe it's your thinking, uh, maybe it's a, a mindset. Uh, and I know that's how I grew up. Brother Fred talked about it uh, today about a mindset of religion. Yeah, yeah, we had it. And we had to continually ask the Lord to help us renew our mind because we had been so brought up in a religious setting in the denomination that believed certain things and didn't believe certain things and believed things in the Bible and uh, didn't believe some of the things in the Bible. And, and so well, that was ingrained in our thinking and we had to break free from that mm -hmm. and ask the Lord to bring us freedom. And uh, sometimes we get something broken off of us uh, because that's why we were raised from little children. Both Sherry and I were raised as little children in, in that. And they didn't believe in the Holy Spirit. And they never mentioned the, the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. And they never mentioned the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And uh, and they had no power. They had no power to overcome uh, sickness or disease or demons. Uh, and, and that's the way we were raised. And so we had to break free of that and, and rely on the Holy Spirit. And, you know, from Romans 12, it says you have to yield your body. Uh, as a sacrifice uh, so that he can renew your mind and if you're holding on uh, to your traditions and your doctrines then you're not uh, yielding yourself to him and letting him show you the truth about that Amen. Amen. men will lead you astray you have to have, have, be led by the holy spirit you have to have that anointing within you and know uh, what the lord is wanting you to know he's wanting you to encounter him to experience him and a lot of times our traditions and doctrines keep us from doing that so it's important mm -hmm. that we break free from that and then we only do that by the holy spirit the power of the holy spirit amen and before before i close before i open up the floor for any comments that you would like to make or uh concerning this message tonight I want to impart something to you. And the, the Lord has given me the authority to impart tonight. And I want to impart into each one of you a fire that cannot be quenched. A fire that will rise up in you and send you out of the walls. That will send you out to where the people are hurting, to send you out to where the people need to come to Jesus. Hallelujah. And I impart that to you right now in the name of Jesus. If you want to receive it. Receive it. Receive it in Jesus' name. Receive that fire that will send you outside the walls to minister to the people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Also, I speak healing to two of your backs. Uh, one is in the middle of your spinal area, and the other one is lower, uh, closer to your hip areas, hip area. Uh, in Jesus' name, I send healing uh, to, to your backs in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And one of your husbands, uh, one of your husbands has has been having headaches and uh, these headaches are caused by the nerves constricting uh, in um, the top of his 
like the temples of his of his head and also the very back of his neck uh, is all twisted up and that's where those headaches are are coming from and so right now I spend I send the healing power uh, of Jesus Christ into his neck into his the temples of his of his head in Jesus name Amen. and you can tell him that that we, that, that we prayed uh, for for him tonight in the name of Jesus thank you Lord you know one of the things and, and Sherry is really good at this is if we're in a restaurant she's uh, sensitive to the people around her or if she goes into a store she's sensitive to the people around her and if there's somebody that uh, needs prayer if they look like they're distressed or something she'll go over and speak to them or it may be just somebody eating at, at a in a restaurant and she may have a word from the lord you've got to be sensitive uh to the lord uh, to do that. I, I think about uh, one group that we prayed uh, for the pastors. Uh, there there were there was a choir. It was a choir group. In, in, in uh, a restaurant that we were eating in, and we wound up uh, praying for several of the people there. And, and what's interesting, uh, I heard this uh, today, I think, that if if you say to someone, I have a word for you from the Lord, nobody wants to uh, cut you off and uh, everybody wants to hear and, and so be sensitive and there's so many times uh, that sherry has a word for somebody in a restaurant or in a retail store or in walmart or our drive through our drive through she'll just have a, a prophetic word because she's sensitive to the holy spirit but also uh, looking at the people and and trying to see where is the where does the lord want to use her that's a, a lot uh, about what she's ministering tonight. Just be sensitive to the Holy Spirit and yield uh, to the Lord to be used. And, and, and maybe it's just a word of encouragement. Maybe it's just to, to uh, encourage people or, or to speak uh, something positive uh, to them uh, or even ask them uh, what is the problem. And there's so many times you see people that are in distress mm -hmm. and you might ask them, well, what, what is it? Can I pray for you? Uh, most people will not uh, deny you the opportunity to pray for them. Uh, there was one instance, I remember a woman said, uh, yes, you can do it uh, when you get home. Well, that's okay. I, I mean, she didn't reject it. She just she didn't want to take time at that moment to be prayed for, but she she did not reject the prayer. And that's the only one I can think of that's ever said, no, don't, nobody ever said, no, don't pray for me. And no, don't give me uh, a prophetic word, what the Lord is saying. Everybody wants to know what God is going to say to them. There's nobody that's going to say, oh, oh no, I don't, I don't want to know what God is saying. Mm. Oh, that's pretty dangerous. If you say, I don't want to know. And we just don't encounter that. We don't encounter that. Now, there might be some places in the world that that might happen, but that's not going to happen uh, in this in the southern United States. The people don't want uh, to miss God. And, and so be sensitive to what the Spirit is saying. It's time to rise up and mm -hmm. be who God has called you to be. God has an incredible thing for each of you to do. And when's it going to happen? And if it's not now, when is it going to happen? Mm -hmm. When are you going to obey God? And if it's not you that God can use, who, who do you think God will use? Yeah. He wants you. He wants you now. So now is the time. Just yield yourself to him. Uh, you can say this in your own private way. Mm -hmm. uh, but just say that I yield my self to you lord I'm, I'm willing to be used open my eyes show me someone that needs to be a minister to uh, let me give them a word of encouragement or what they need so it's time mm -hmm. to do that okay and i'm going to give you an assignment for uh this will this week until we come back together next tuesday night and that is i want you to go outside the wall i want you to go outside the walls outside the walls of religion, 
And I want you to come back next Tuesday night and share with us something that you, you have done about the spirit of the Lord. Maybe it's a word to someone. Maybe it's uh, taking some groceries to someone. Maybe it's making a telephone call. Uh, but something that will, will spur your heart uh, to go outside the walls and to, and to bring, you know, preaching, te teaching, and healing uh, to those that are outside. Touch somebody's uh, life. Touch somebody's life. Thank this, you very much. This week. Touch yeah. somebody's life this, this week. Well, just one and, person. That would be and, a good start. And when, when you come back uh, uh, next Tuesday night, we'll give you opportunity to, uh, to share about who you helped and, um, and how you felt about that. And, and I, I tell you, it's a, it's a new way of living. It's a new way of knowing Jesus. And it's a new way. Uh, and I believe that that's part of, of this year for the body of Christ, uh, for us to, to be one and to do his will.